seven sons passed before Samuel, and each time the Lord said, that is not the one. Uh -huh. Samuel then asked, do you have any more sons? Uh -huh. He said, yes, there is one out tending to the sheep. Yeah. Samuel asked, and he fetched after the boy to bring him in. Uh -huh. And in comes this ruddy or reddish hair looking boy. He was bright eyed and it says he was good looking. Uh -huh. The Lord said that this was the one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. David was anointed and the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. Uh -huh. At that same time, an evil spirit, it says, comes upon Saul. Uh -huh. And Saul becomes distressed and starts having thoughts and they think of this boy who can play this harp. Someone goes out and they bring David in and David begins to play the harp before Saul and it begins to soothe him. Eventually this happens several times over and as he comes back, things go on and eventually David becomes Saul's armor bearer. Wow. After a while the story goes on and that's when he kills and beheads Goliath. Wow. Later on the story goes on and he becomes the captain of his army. Uh -huh. And eventually David becomes his son-in-law. Now, do you think at that time, if Saul knew that David was the one that was going to be the king after him, that he wouldn't have killed him a long time ago? Do you really think that he would have brought him close into the reins and let him rule over his army if he knew that David was the one that was going to become All right. king? All right. Amen. All right. So Saul began to get jealous because the people loved David. They begin to sing songs, and it said that it, that Saul killed the thousands, but David killed the ten thousand. That began to trouble him, wanting to know why they talk more about David than they did about him. He actually tried to kill him twice. So then he made a plot, and told his son Jonathan about it. But Jonathan was David's best friend. Hallelujah! I'm almost done. Jonathan tells David, and David is able to escape. He goes on and he goes to Nob where he gets recognized and he flees and goes to Gath. Mm -hmm. That's where the story begins. Now David is trying to hide out in Gath with King Achish and several of the servants recognize him and they begin to sing the song that was made up. Ain't it that just how things work? That every time you think you've gotten away, Every time you get ready to go hide someplace or think you can get up under a rock, somebody sees you and points you out. David had gone from bad to worse. He had jumped from the frying pan right into the fire. So what does he do? David decides to come up with a plan. And in his plan, he decided to pretend that he was a mad man. He started to act crazy and walk up and down the streets. I'm quite sure that if we're honest with one another, we can say we know a few people that are acting a little bit crazy right about now. But David was scared. He didn't know what King Achish was going to do. So he begins to let the spittle fall from his mouth and drop out on his beard. He began to hit the gates and scratch on the walls as if he had completely lost his mind. And then he had the nerve to tell them that he wanted to fight in the army. I don't know about you, but I don't know how much trust I could put in a crazy person yielding a weapon in war. Right. One minute they might be on my side, and then the next minute they might turn and try to attack me. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Well, David failed their test. The king wondered why they would think he would want a crazy man before him. Because of this, David was able to flee. He escaped and fled to the cave of Adonai. Uh -huh. He was delivered once again. Well. Now, David here is sitting in this cave alone for a while. What would you do if you were David? If it was us, a lot of us, whenever we are alone, we're going through troubles and issues and situations. Some of us become secluded. We don't even want to talk to anybody. Get down on our knees and pray. That's the furthest thing from my mind. Pick up your Bible and read the word so that it can begin to speak to you. We don't even want to do that. But David, David, David. David, who was out of fellowship with God, now is back in fellowship. And David begins to recognize that God is on his side. And that in all circumstances, he should realize that he should praise God. He realized that this was where his help came from. David began to sit in the cave and he began to think about all the things that were going on that had transpired in his life. I can imagine that we don't know actually in the Bible whether or not the 400 men had got there right at this time this song was written. But it says that they did eventually come. So I'm going to say in my sanctified mind that I believe David was sitting in the cave all alone. And David began to think 